Good morning once again, everyone. Um, today we're going to be looking at unboxing the Johnson & Johnson Vision product, the multifocal IOL. Earlier, I reviewed and unboxed the Symphony IOL from Johnson & Johnson. This was the version before that. Think of the, think of these uh, multifocal lenses like cars, uh, the 1999 Toyota Camry, and then the 2020 Toyota Camry. Uh, a lot changed between then and now, and a lot changed between these lenses and when the Symphony came out. This was still when ophthalmologists were focused and companies were focused on making lenses that um, brought that near vision very, very close to you and oftentimes sacrificing some of the distance vision and getting some glare and halos more often at night and losing some of your pseudo accommodation. That's a lot of stuff, but basically these lenses were a precursor to the current generation of lenses and the focus of the technology that we have now. However, having said all that, these are still important in the Johnson & Johnson um, multifocal advanced technology IOL implant armamentarium because they use this in their personalized vision program which um, I've explained in the Symphony IOL and I'll go over on a separate vi video again that's probably not going to be something that carries on down the road but it's uh, what we have now uh, again to review you put the Symphony lens in your dominant eye and you put the uh, multifocal IOL in your non-dominant eye. So again, to review more, uh, Symphony gives you a lot of pseudo accommodation. It gives you really good um, intermediate vision, really good intermediate vision and excellent, excellent distance vision. These lenses are the opposite. They give you really good uh, near vision and they give you um, fairly good intermediate vision and there is some a decline in your distance vision. The, um, the benefit of dominance and non-dominance and what Johnson & Johnson calls personalized vision is that your dominant eye wants to see in the distance and your non-dominant eye we tend to use for up-close vision. These are two examples of the multifocal spectrum for uh, Johnson Johnson. You've got a 275 power and you've got a, this is a plus four power. Um, again, if you look at your um, glasses prescription it will say what your ad is, ADD, your bifocal power. And this tries to simulate um, what we would give to you with your bifocal power. This lens uh, is very, very powerful, the plus four. It would be tough for me to put that in someone's eye unless they really did a lot of near work and we had a long talk about it. I did uh, do cataract surgery on a jeweler who wanted to see really, really close things. And uh, this is what we decided upon, though that would, that, that's definitely a less used, less often used lens. Uh, this is more the lens that we go for in your non-dominant eye when we do personalized vision. Um, Again, says Abbott, but Johnson & Johnson owns them. Let's just look at one of these. Um, let's look at the 275. 
and we'll put this aside. So again, these lenses are made in the Netherlands. I've gone over that before. These are the um, specific, so you've got a 275 ad. This is ZK Boo, that's what we call it. These are all the different codes for the uh, different IOLs, and that's how each company does it. Again, just like your BMW um, 3 Series or 5 Series, 535, this is the specifics of that. The power is individualized um, to each patient. So this is a plus 19 power. That will be how we generate the power calculation based upon your preoperative testing that you do. Again, the A constant is integral to the type of material these lenses are made out of. And thankfully, the companies are standardizing their A constants. It's a it's mitigating risk um, and making life simpler for ophthalmologists when we calculate um, your lenses to have a constant A constant. And let's get inside here. So again, this task will be completed by the circulating nurse in the operating room. This is a non-sterile product at the present time when she's handling this. Um, again, I'm hoping someday you're going to be able to buy these products online. That's my dream, so we can reduce costs for patients. But presently, only uh, a hospital system or a surgical center can purchase these products. So inside, you get the code, the barcode that you will keep. You'll get a lens paper similar to this, which you'll keep in your safe deposit box. And this just identifies exactly the lens implant that you have in your eye. Is this important? Relatively speaking, it is. Um, you're not going to remove your lens implant from your eye. We just don't do that under almost any circumstance. But sometimes we like to look at lenses um, later in life if there's an issue with your glasses or um, we have to do something else in your eye. We like to look back at the kind of lens you have in your eye. So let's keep going. This is just stuff um, from the FDA that you will not receive, but um, the surgical center or the place where you're having your surgery takes care of. Uh, let's see if I can get this open easily on camera. The last time I had a lot of trouble. Okay, there we go. So, again, the circulating nurse is this outside bag is non-sterile. This inside bag is sterile. And it would go to the surgical technician or the assistant to the ophthalmologist and this is sterile and so then the assistant would open this up and these containers have the lens in place and they rotate and one lifts this up, and inside is the lens. I will magnify this up a little bit. And let's remove this lens. This would be the same process that the, obviously under sterile conditions, that the surgical technician completes, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, so the lens is clear, some lenses have a tint to them, um, Johnson & Johnson does not make tinted lenses, uh, 
Alcon Corporation does. Um, I'm not sure how valuable ophthalmologists think that is um, of late. We used to think that was important, but um, it's probably not that important. There's a yellow tint in some of the Alcon lenses. Again, you can see the magging of this lens because this is a condensing lens. And this is exactly what it's uh, doing in your eye. I'm fascinated by that every time I see it. Um, you can see, again, how much that is magged up. And this lens, it's very difficult to see outside of the human body. But there are concentric rings on this lens. Uh, you can kind of see them there. I'm going to center this. Sorry about that. Um, there's concentric rings on this lens, and as I explained in the uh, video about bifocals and trifocals, um, each of those rings adds either distance vision or up close vision and your brain kind of bends that information and you have a wider range of vision than um, you would get in a monofocal lens. Again, this is a multifocal lens. Let's center this. And I'm going to try to mag this up a little bit more. And you can see how smushy the lens is. We love smushy lenses. You can see some of those concentric rings on this lens. That is what defines a multifocal or advanced technology IOL. Um, and that is the long and short of it. Thank you very much.